Okay, uh, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this time we can spend together and help us to understand your word and, and grow from it, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. amen. So uh, after last week, uh, or after, when you were reading over this, do you have any questions to begin with you want to discuss? Like I said, there's not a lot of material here, but uh, short isn't always that bad, really. Okay, well, that's simple. Uh, last week, we talked about the fall of the northern uh, kingdom of Israel. You remember the difference between Israel and Judah. And uh, tonight, we're going to deal with the subject of the final fall of, of uh, uh, Judah. God had uh, finally had enough. And... Uh, uh, Hezekiah, we talked about last week. Hezekiah was a good king in Israel. Like I said, the northern kingdom of Israel uh, never didn't have any good kings. They were all bad. They were all rebellious. The southern kingdom of Judah had uh, good kings and then they had bad kings. And Hezekiah was a, a really good king. He honored God. He made some mistakes in the end, but uh, he, he did a... Uh, uh, he did a pretty good job. Well, his son was a, was a king by the name of Manasseh. And Manasseh was probably, if David was the greatest king of, of, this, uh, of Israel, and then, of course, Judah, Manasseh was probably the worst. He reigned for 50 years. He became king when he was 12. And he reigned, I think, 50 years. And he did just about everything... Um, wrong he was uh he he sacrificed his his uh sons to uh foreign gods uh he actually put altars in in the temple in solomon's temple uh he raised up images of the the kings or the gods from the nations around him uh and he did he did really uh he really did terrible things um and when he died his son he, he actually, he actually, uh, Manasseh repented uh, later on in his life, and, and God, uh, God seems to have forgiven him for what he, son, his, he's, he did, but then his son, who reigned in his place, um, didn't, uh, he followed in the old Manasseh's life, and ultimately he was assassinated. He only reigned two years, and then he was assassinated. Uh, after that, uh, the king uh, Josiah uh, Ray, uh, was uh, came into power, and uh, he led a great revival in the in the nation of Judah. There was uh, he did some really good things, and uh, he brought the nation back to God. But it's interesting that in the uh, in the account of Josiah's life, uh, it is said that while God accepted Josiah's good work, uh, what Manasseh had done before him was the final straw and ultimately he is going to uh lead the the nation of judah into to be captured uh, josiah uh, was a good king as i mentioned he made a political decision uh king uh, uh king nico king of egypt was on his way to do battle i believe with babylon and uh josiah said well i'm gonna go out and get in a fight with him and and uh nico told him, look, I'm not here to bother you. I just, I'm going to go by. Don't bother me. I'll bother you. But he decided he was going to fight King, uh, Nico, King of Egypt. And, uh, ultimately he was killed in battle and he was the last of the godly Kings of Judah. Uh, there was a, followed him a series of weak and uh, wicked and pathetic Kings that, uh, some of them only lasted uh, even months. Uh, Zedekiah was a king that was there 12 years. He ultimately rebelled against uh, Nebuchadnezzar, and uh, it cost him his children, and he had his eyes put out, and he was put into prison. Uh, and so Nebuchadnezzar, the great king Nebuchadnezzar, uh, crushes Judah and takes the nation into exile. And at that point, the nation of Judah and the nation of Israel cease to exist that summarizes the last uh, uh what six chapters or five chap six five chapters of second kings and the last four chapters of second chronicles 
chronicles these events. Two of the great, the major prophets. You remember when I talked about what a major prophet was? Major versus minor. Do you remember that? Is that a trick question? I'm going to mute you, uh, Russ. <laughs> you better. No. <laughs> we talked about the major prophet. Is Linda there? She is. Linda, you know the answer to that. I'm afraid I don't. That memory is gone. Can you please inform us again? I would be more than happy to. Beth, do you know? <laughs> the... <laughs> it's contagious. <laughs> well, I, uh, I lecture here all week in the house. You got your head full. <laughs> <laughs> she turns me out. The major prophets versus the minor prophets. The major prophets, one that that were that are more significant in the, than the minor prophets. The major prophets were Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel. The uh, minor prophets were Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Zechariah, Malachi, Malachi. Yeah, they Malachi. they. Were, yeah, that Mala or Malachi, he was also Italian. That, that was a, a joke from uh, that's not very funny, but anyway, I, I share that with you. Anyway, uh, Jeremiah and Ezekiel uh, are interesting are interesting prophets. Ezekiel goes into exile uh, with the nation into uh, into an, into uh, Babylon, and. Um, he pronounces judgment actually on Babylon that ultimately is going to be uh, take place uh, in the future. And uh, he also writes that famous uh, passage on the Valley of the Dry Bones. You, you remember the old spiritual? Dem bones, dem bones, dem. No, that's not it. The knee bones connected to the hip. Dem bones, yeah. Yeah, it, anyway, it's... Uh, it is a, uh, a description of the coming alive of the nation of Israel. They're, they're, they're a valley of uh, dry bones, and they become back to life. And there is a prediction that uh, uh, the nation is going to be uh, returned back to the land, which is going to take place uh, in the, uh, not next week, because we're going to talk about Daniel next week. But uh, under Ezra and Nehemiah, they come back into the land and uh, they are restored. Jeremiah was called the weeping prophet uh, because uh, uh, he, he stayed in the land. And you, you think you have a rough life. Read about the life of Jeremiah. He was uh, uh, thrown in prison. He was uh, persecuted throughout his entire life. And... Uh, he uh, he wrote he wrote trying to get the people to wake up, and uh, he wrote also wrote the book of Lamentations. What is a lamentation, Linda? It's uh, kind of like a "Woe is me! Oh, things are so bad." Yeah, laments. It's Lamenting. a lament. Russ, you need to adjust your camera. All we can see is your nose. <clears throat> glass that's my design oh okay all right <laughs> so uh, anyway he wrote some really kind of cool passage one one of the uh verses he wrote that uh that a lot of people uh, use as a promise today call to me and i will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known jeremiah 33 3 he also wrote uh, this in Lamentations. Lamentations really is, it, it's a lament. It's, uh, it's a sad day. Uh, the, the nation has been taken into captivity. The people are mourning that. Uh, they are sad over what has happened. And then he writes the, these words uh, that uh, have written into a very familiar hymn that we sing. The steadfast, the, again, this is in the lament. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And you know the hymn, right? Great is thy faithfulness. O God, my Father, morning by morning, new mercies I see. Sing it with me. 
Fess over on the couch grinning. Great is thy faithfulness. Sing it for us. Anybody know it? Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. You're the old song leader there, John. You at, at the Homer Church, you led it many times, didn't you? I well, I know. The trouble is, is everybody's got away from the hymns. Yeah, there's some it's great been so many years. Yeah, but his no parts of it. Right, but but that uh, that great hymn. That's an old great hymn. Uh, morning by morning, uh, thy mercies I see. Oh. Uh, all I have, what is it? You got the words there? All I have needed, my, thy, thy hand, hand, had, thy hand, hand have provided. provided. Yeah, great is thy faithfulness. Lord unto me. Yeah, that's it. So that came from uh, Lamentations. And, uh, you know, uh, if we're not careful, we can, we can look around us today and we can, we can uh, woe is me about everything, but the, the faithfulness of God never changes. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter uh, the state of the way things are, uh, this is true. Uh, the steadfast love, what does steadfast mean? Uh, enduring, uh, holding on. Yeah, yeah, enduring. Uh, uh, it, it just, it never wavers. And so uh, it never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. Uh, we are approaching the fall season here in Ohio. And uh, the days are beginning to cool off a little bit. And I get up early in the morning and walk. And I, I sometimes think of this hymn when I walk down our little, our little road where we live. Uh, Cornfields around and uh, soybeans and, and then there's forests and so on and and the sun will be coming up and you focus on the the goodness of God that is faithful every day and then he says the Lord is my portion says my soul therefore I will hope in him and so that's what happens when we are Christians we we hope in Christ because of his faithfulness it, it, the world may look like it's going to hell in a handbasket but he's in charge and so uh, uh, this, these are some great passages from Jeremiah. Uh, and I, the last thing I put on the worksheet there, God made a promise to his people in the, in the very beginning that if they would faithfully follow him, he would bless them. If they, if they didn't, he would judge them. His long-suffering patience, uh, long patience delayed the ultimate judgment that came. However, he never totally deserted them as we shall see moving forward so we see uh in the we see in this uh the story here as as the nations officially end and their kingdoms end the, the last king um of of judah was in the line of david and the next king that will reign will be class Jesus. There you go. I knew that the scholar from Florida would have the answer to that. So, yes, he will be the next king that will sit on the throne of David. And, of course, that's, uh, that is yet a future event. Uh, the little map down there is pretty pathetic. But up in the corner, Assyria, uh, in the right-hand corner, which you can barely read, is, where it is, is, the, is the kingdom that came down and took over the northern part. Of, of the land and Babylon, which is down on the uh, halfway down, two thirds of the way down on the little map, is the, is the kingdom that came over and uh, and over and took over Judah. Now next week we're going to deal with Daniel, who was one of the one of the young men that was taken into captivity, and he wrote a very significant book, and that will be our study next week. That's my notes for the day. Uh, you have any comments or thoughts? Jim Bones was recorded in 1928, and it is based on Ezekiel 37. Right, Ezekiel 37. Didn't Bones. hear what you said, Paul. Come on over here, please. She's the assistant professor. She has to lean into the camera or she's blurry. Look, out of nowhere, she appears. I just said that song, Dim Bones, was recorded in um, 1928. 
and it is based on Ezekiel 37. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then Ezekiel 38 and 39 is the story of the Gog and Magog and, and uh, Armageddon. I think it's Armageddon. Is it? Anyway. Uh, so Ezekiel was a, it was a significant book too. So uh, any final thoughts before we say goodbye? Next week we will deal with uh, Daniel. Are you going to explain the AD from oh. last week? Yeah, let me get yeah. my phone. <laughs> Well, I remember what it was. Yeah. yeah. Why don't you explain explain it, Linda? Like well, I can't remember the the, the uh, guy's name, but it was it was it was uh, done by a monk back in about five twenty five, I believe, and it was um, the A.D. was actually at at his birth. That was it uh, references his his birth, and not after death. It's the 80s and it a was, Latin word. You know, Latin, yeah, it was Adu. Adu I, I'd have to look at it. I don't have it in front of me. But, but anyway, it had to do with the them calculating uh, the date of Easter was how it came about Anno and the reason. Domini. Anno What's Domini. that? You sent me a long thing about it, Linda, and yeah. I can't find it. Yeah, but that that's basically in a nutshell what it is. It's the year of our Lord, it, it also means, means, right? Yeah, it means, yeah, Anno Domini means in the year of the right. Lord. Year of our Lord, yes. Yeah. So, Some Italian which is, monk. Hold which on. is referencing his birth. Right. Tell him yeah. to be quiet for a second. Beth wants me to mute you, but I won't, yeah. so just hush yeah, a minute. Just a minute. She's trying to play something. She doesn't know how to use her phone that well. Not working. See that? I'm trying to. Let me see if I can do it. Okay, so the pronunciation. No. You sent me this nice thing. How did where did it go, Linda? It's in your text messages from me, unless you deleted it. No, I keep everything you write. It's like scripture. <laughs> okay, I'll remember that. <laughs> Oh, okay. Anno Domin Domini in the year of our Lord refers to the time after the birth of Jesus Christ. You, you wrote something T H E W E. What's that? The wee wee? That was, that was Siri or whatever correcting my mis what she thought I was trying to say. The AD and the BC abbreviations came from an Italian monk named Dionysus Ex Exigus. Exegus, and it is believed that he came up with AD and BC somewhere in the AD 500s. These abbreviations were thought to be the calculation of time that came out of an argument on how to calculate Easter. And then you wrote, so now you know the rest of the story. Now, is that a sarcastic comment or? No, that's a, that's a Did it Paul Harvey Harvey. used to say that? Oh, you're Paul right. Yeah. You're right. Forgive Get me. Get with it, Paul. Okay. You're Okay, any any final thoughts? Hey, John, close our time in prayer, and then we'll say goodbye. Okay. Father, we thank you for this time we have together, study your word, and, uh, just get together, and, uh, fellowship with each other. We ask you to be with each one throughout the week. Keep us safe and close to you, and uh, bless each one and as we go about our evenings. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, you all have a great day. I'm going to stop recording.